We are back for another fun-filled week in the markets. More drama around stable coins. We have some big, big news around inflation later this week. Going to learn more about consumer credit today. All sorts of fun stuff today on Money Never Sleeps. How can you not feel jacked up after watching that fresh intro video put together by none other than Kevin Shannon right over here? Absolutely love that. Welcome to the show. Before we get going, do us a favor. Hit those buttons down below. A like, a subscribe, drop some comments, interact in the chat. Nothing that we say on this show is financial advice. Kevin and I are not financial advisors. We're a few guys who love following the markets. So please do your own research before making any buys or sells. Kev, we have a hot day in the markets. Equities are trading higher. Crypto is still ranging, but kind of you know chugging down a little bit. We had some news around PayPal launching a stable coin that in the past would have sent the crypto market to the moon. Today, didn't even budge, went down a little bit. It's a very interesting time in the markets. No one knows what the hell they're doing. Let's just keep it real here. Most people are just so far out to lunch. But how are you feeling on this Monday? What are you looking at in the markets? Man, it's been a wild Monday. I, honestly, last night I was like, I don't know if we're going to have a lot to talk about. I was like, maybe the yellow thing, the yellow bankruptcy was going to be one of the most important things. It really isn't. Uh, there's been so much news that came out and that just shows you that, you know, everyone takes takes some time off on the weekends. But I'm really been keeping an eye on a lot of the news regarding stable coins in the Huobi exchange, which, of course, includes my boy CZ and his, uh, his little cousin. Justin's son. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm keeping an eye on that. There's tons of wild stuff. We'll dive into that. And then I'm just keeping an eye on TradFi. Um, looks like, you know, some equities are just taking off. We're seeing, you know, Dow just absolutely buy back everything that it pretty much lost in the past, you know, a few days of last week. So we'll see. I mean, we got a big day, a big week of data coming later on Thursday and Friday. But for right now, I think the markets are just kind of you know, just taking it as is and seeing if they can make some money on the way up, hoping that we're still in a bull run. I don't know if that's the truth, though. I think statistic, like from a, a percentage standpoint, we're still in the bull run, but we'll see how long that lasts. Exactly. Some of the data that we're looking at this week, like Kevin said, it's going to be in the back half of the week. It's going to be Thursday and Friday. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from Fed Presidents Harker and Barkin. That sounds like a, like a magician duo out of Vegas, by the way, uh, yeah. Presidents Harker and Barkin. So Perfect. that should be good. We'll we'll get we'll hear from them kind of on probably what they think the Fed is going to do for rates moving forward. I keep hearing more and more discussion around the fact that the Fed is probably done raising rates and that they're going to be holding them into, you know, Q2 of next year. So there is that possibility as well, something to keep in mind. Once again, with all the all the debt out there, that's not great from a compounding standpoint, you know, especially with people having more credit card debt than they do savings. Pretty big percentage of people had that. That is not a great setup at all. Now, if we continue to see wages go up, that is going to help with it. But still, not not great. And you see how much debt the consumer and the government has. Doesn't paint a super rosy picture. That's On it. Thursday, we'll get the – sorry, Kev, real quick. Uh, the July CPI number expected to come in at 3.3% on the headline, 4.7%. The core number, 4.7 is still really high. Like that's still more than double what the Fed wants. So all of this excitement, I don't know. You know, there's looking ahead a bit. We should see some better head, like some better core numbers in September and October just due to how high those levels were last year. We'll see about that. And then we get producer price index on Friday, kind of seeing the direction of what producers are having to pay to get their goods out there. So that is what we're looking at on the data side. Not a ton of earnings this week. Last week was, which is fine because last week was crazy. There was just every big tech company was reporting last week. So taking a little bit of a breather there gives us a chance to talk about a few other things uh, as we go on the week, whether it's the like upcoming El Nino trade that we want to look at, whether it's going to be the psychology of trading, a lot of fun stuff that we're going to be talking about that isn't the same old like price earnings ratios and, you know, did a, this company beat on the rigged numbers that they had put out? 
Exactly. Rig numbers. I love that. Uh, we saw that Tyson did report earnings today and they took a bit of a hit because their earnings came in or their estimations came in lower than expected. Uh, we saw that the price of or consumers buying meat products and pork products haven't gone down. Chicken was up a little bit. So, I mean, that does show you that people are probably going to go for, you know, the cheaper alternative. And another thing that was pretty interesting, I was looking from the data from uh, the jobs report was that a lot of temp agencies and like temp positions have been eliminated. So that's a good, you know, thing to keep in mind because that's just excess, right? And if we're anticipating, you know, some hard times ahead, maybe some of these companies are front loading. Again, I I used to, be, I was so bullish on unemployment going up. I don't see that happening until we actually hit the market crash, just looking at, you know, historical data. But it is a good sign to see, you know, positions being eliminated going into what we anticipate being a recession because that shows you that a crash most likely is on the way. Again, being at the rates that we are currently and how long they've been elevated and how fast we've elevated these, it's no surprise that we're starting to see some of the smaller cracks in the foundation that should be pointing and hinting towards a recession. Absolutely. Appreciate everybody for being here. Thanks, House, Randy, Ace, you guys are the best. As always, appreciate it very much. Uh, so the Tyson thing is interesting because like two weeks ago, Wingstop reported and they were having to pay more money for chicken wings heading into you know, the start of football season. So I don't know, maybe they're not getting, I guess they're not getting from Tyson, but we got, uh, we got some conflicting data in the world of chicken wings, which is just, I mean, I think consumers are buying chicken right now, but uh, maybe that's why we're starting to see uh, more demand and lower supply. So that could be price inflation there too. Right. Uh, who knows Man, but chicken chicken wingonomics, dude, it's uh, they focus. don't teach you this in school, but that's why you turn into this show because only the best of the best is discussed right here on money never sleeps okay kev let's talk about the uh let's talk about the stable coin yeah shenanigans that are going on for those who are new uh who don't follow crypto a stable coin is just a token that is supposed to be pegged to the u.s dollar one to one i say supposed to be because we've seen plenty of situations whether it's the traditional back stable coin or the algorithmic stable coin made famous by now uh you know Interpol escapee, or he he got caught. He got caught. Yeah, he's uh, Do Kwan, he's in jail. Thank God. Uh, but that's what a, stable coins are kind of supposed to be used to, you know, store your value and online transact if you want to in that way, uh, stake them if you want to, lend them out, whatever. But it is a dollar to dollar representation of a crypto token. So just a quick brief for anyone who may be new to crypto here. So talk to us about what is going on there. Like I said at the top. PayPal is going to be launching their stable coin. I believe something wrong, like it's going to be transactable on Venmo. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, I think that's true. Long term for crypto, it's a positive that more and more big companies are embracing the blockchain. Like I said, it was between the ETH ETF filings and this news in a bull market. ETH would have just ripped. It would have been an ungodly green candle. But today. No one gives a shit because no everyone who is who believes in ETH has probably had as much allocated to it as they possibly can. So no sort of movement there still makes me bullish long term. But give us the rundown on all the stablecoin drama going on with your buddy CZ. Yeah. How can you not be uh, bullish on this PayPal news? They're adding liquidity to an illiquid market. Not the time yet, but it's good to know that there is money coming back into this space and there is institutions that can definitely add some more money. It's going to bring us up. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely insane. Some of the stuff that we've been seeing over the weekend, a lot of it has been considered FUD and he's been throwing up the four each time someone brings it up. But we saw that Huobi exchange had lost uh, $2.5 billion in total value locked over the weekend on, based on reports of insolvency, right? There were, there's a lot of people saying that they don't have the actual funds that they're claiming to have. They apparently have $630 million, I believe, of uh, what was it? of usdt but apparently they've been selling off like crazy and they currently only have about 46 million uh it's pretty wild that's an insane you know drop that's huge discrepancy uh that's not necessarily a great thing to see again that's very similar to what happened with ftx right ftx didn't have the amount of reserves that they claimed that they did have so the number in people's accounts was very different from what the actual number that they actually had in their reserves so that's a terrible sign but we have also seen that you know Coin, not Coinbase, uh, CZ and Justin Sun, they're always being accused. These guys are fudded nonstop, but there might be a reason why. CZ, we know that 
ever since BUSD got you know blacklisted and they got hit with that lawsuit, that they can't really mint or issue any more new BUSD. So they have to find the new stable coin. And we see that a lot of what they did was that they were buying or they were selling pretty much consumers funds of USDC back in the SIVB collapse. And they were propping up the market and they bought, you know, hundred mil, hundred billion, hundred million. No, what is it? hundred thousand dollars worth of, or hundred thousand coins of Bitcoin. So many fucking numbers to remember, but a hundred thousand <laughs> Bitcoin. Uh, and it pretty much totaled up to about 3.5 billion. And that was pretty much what they had in terms of the reserves for consumer, for their customers, what their customers were holding in uh, stable coins. So they were artificially propping up the market. That's what they're being accused of. And what's even worse is they're also being accused of using, you know, true USD and this new one, FDUSD, which is based in Hong Kong. Very mm-hmm. sketchy. And we've seen that while the market caps of USDT and USDC are relatively different, I believe USDT is still trending upwards. USDC has been dropping though on market cap. And we've also seen that there's a lot of stuff where they're, you know, laying people off recently. Um, we're starting to see the stable coin where we're, these exchanges are trying to either hurt one another to the point where they're going to promote one stable coin over the other, because they know that someone's exposed to something that potentially could go under. And because of what we heard from Huobi, we saw that Binance was selling an insane amount of tether, but because they were selling an insane amount of tether, tether decided that they're not going to redeem any of Binance's uh, USDT for USD, which is absolutely wild. And what could that possibly be tying into? Well, it could possibly be related to the DOJ's you know, charges against Binance. Maybe Tether doesn't want anything to do with them because they're afraid that then the DOJ will probe into their, into their business. So there's a lot of like, everyone here seems like they have some exposure to each other. And it's absolutely insane because if one of them goes down, there's likely that this whole stable coin back and forth. Yes, 100% ace. If something bad happens with Wobi or something bad happens with Binance, it's likely that it's going to spread into other ones. It's going to be a mass contagion event. They're always they're all saying FUD, and they're all seem to be on the same page with it. But you know these reserves they don't lie. We can see where the money's moving. Everything's on chain. The scary thing is obviously if Tether were to go down again, I don't necessarily think Tether's going to go down. The thing where people kind of feel like it's going to go down is because they aren't backed one to one, one coin to one U.S. dollar exact. They have other assets which account for their reserves that value that's equal to the value. But the good thing is that when people do redeem through their website and you know their their uh, treasury, then they do burn the tokens that were sent in to redeem for USD. So then they take them out of circulation. So it's really interesting what's going on here. Uh, I want to pull up the market caps of some of these stable coins real quick because it's really wild. For Tether, we're talking about $83.8 billion. Uh, we can see this is their entire market cap right now. And then we can see that it's been increasing recently. Uh, let's pull up. Yeah, here it is. We can see that this has been on the rise here, especially in the past 24 hours. But we can see that Tether has been increasing for their dominance over the market, which means a lot of people are moving out of some of these assets and they're moving into stables, right? And this is where it gets really tricky because then if we look at USDC, look at their entire market cap, we can see that's on the daily. Let's pull up to the weekly. We can see USDC has been on a downward slope nonstop, right? This is over the weekly, how much uh, liquidity is being pulled out of USDC. So it seems like there's definitely dominance going towards other stable coins and it's affecting these exchanges. I don't know if it's affecting their solvency or, or their exposure. Again, if some of these prices and you know assets that they're betting on, like obviously they use the USDC to buy Bitcoin and it p- pushed the price up, so they made some money on it. The question is, what if they do that again, or if they are in the middle of a trade and the price absolutely goes south on them, right? Just say there's mass liquidity, mass liquid event, something, one exchange goes under and they just bet wrong. Obviously, this could be absolutely devastating. Um, I want to pull up, what is it, Huobi token? I honestly have never used Huobi in my life. Uh, I don't even think I can in the US. I don't, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's a, it's a Chinese exchange. I think it's in Hong Kong, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, we can see that their token has been absolutely tanking over the past few weeks. Uh, see down here, this is where it's been moving. And then we s- haven't seen the price too much fluctuate in the past few days. Obviously, it's been kind of like within this range. It's, you know, it's moving a decent amount. It's from like 275 to like, I don't know, maybe 254. So it's like in a 20 cent range. Maybe it's going back and forth. Honestly, this just seems like it's sideways chop. A lot of liquidation events here and there. 
But for the most part, you know, we're not seeing true movement in the price yet. If we were to see something crazy happen, it's very possible that we could see something like FTT where it absolutely tanks, right? Where it's just nonstop. There's anyone who tries to buy it up is just going to be absolutely killed and they're going to liquidate it on the way down. So there's a lot of stuff going on with these stable coins that are really scary, um, mainly because you can't really trust anyone, right? I mean, there's a lot of FUD going on where it's like, oh no, CZ is blaming Tether, but maybe it's because Tether is you know, cutting them off. That's the reason why CZ is blaming them and saying that they're solvent and they're trying to operate like business as usual. Uh, you know, Justin Sun came out and said that, you know, there's tons of people trying to flood us. Wobi came out and put out a statement where they didn't even address some of the accusations or concerns. They just said that we've been, we're good for the space and we need to be around because long-term we're going to help people uh, grow their wealth. It's like all these people are, are denying everything. They're not facing it head on. And that just absolutely screams red flag to me. So I'm really, I'm honestly kind of scared for a lot of things in the space right now, mainly around the stable coins. And I think that stable coins are going to be one of the most regulated assets. Once we are out of this bear market, I think that's where they're going to focus a lot of their attention to because a lot of these things, like it's almost impossible to audit some of these crypto exchanges. And the one that did audit FTX was also the same one that audits true USD, which is absolutely wild. They just rebranded the name and it's the same one that pretty much said that their proof reserves are fine. And let's pull up true USD too. This is Binance's one. And again, I'm not just picking on Binance. I'm picking on pretty much everyone that seems extremely shady right now. Uh, you can't even see this is the one hourly really chart, but let's pull up the monthly, right? This is the market cap for true USD. I can't tell you what bank true USD uses. There is no information on that where they are. Uh, Tether, I know that they are used, you know, they're using Dell Tech and they're using like three other banks internationally. So Tether's market to the US, um, may, while it might be limited for, you know, redeeming from the treasury, I think that they'll be fine internationally as long as, you know, they're able to keep their reserves equal to the peg to the dollar and people are able to, you know, transact and withdraw and they have no issues and their solvency is fine. But there's a lot of these other ones that are smaller that have definitely propped up a lot of this market that are absolutely just shooting up nonstop. And it's just wild to see this with, you know, say USDC absolutely on the decline too, right? In ter terms of total market cap. So if we're following the money, we can see where certain things are going up and certain things are going down. The question is, are we selling certain of these assets to bring up the, the to burn the tokens and then obviously bring up the market caps of stable coins that we hope that a lot of people will start piling money into. I think that's what we're seeing a little bit of. But I also think that we got some of these guys with their pants caught down and they're just trying to act polite because some soon we're going to start seeing some of this absolutely bleed into the markets once the truth gets revealed. Again, we're one DOJ charge away from absolute panic. And I don't care if it's USDC, USDT, any stable coin that you trust, it's definitely going to depeg. But I think that's going to even scare people even more. I think it'll be fine long term, but it's just right now, I don't know, man. It's it's a really scary thing. I woke up to this the other morning, all this news. I just done two days of research and it's absolutely insane to see how much money and how much uh, everything that we've been talking about is kind of lining up and we're starting to get some of the data around it from the on-chain. So that's all I got to say, but definitely a bad time to be uh, picking sides. I think you should just understand that everyone's a piece of shit in this whole ordeal. If you remember back to March when the SIVB crisis was going on, and people were worried about Circle and USDC and if they had enough money to cover it, it depegged by like a significant amount. Like oh, yeah. one USDC was trading for like 78, 80 cents. <laughs> and uh, people out there, myself included, made a nice, nothing crazy, but made a little swing trade there, buying it at 80 cents, knowing that it was going to come back because it was just this unbelievable amount of fear uh, that was completely unfounded because Circle is fine. They've shown time and time again that like they have proof of reserves, like their money is fine. So maybe we see another situation like that. Uh, in which case, I'm not not financial advice. Maybe it all goes tits up. But I I won't be hesitant to uh, if if one of these stable coins that we know is safe uh, depegs for a little bit, there's some money to be made there, and I'm not going to turn that down. Do you trust Tether? From everything I've seen, yeah, I do too. That's it's it's. But here's the hard thing: I am so risk averse to the point where it's like I don't trust fucking anybody. But I also know that there's a reason why these exchanges all use Tether as the main trading pair, right? I've I've been able to move money nonstop with Tether. I have not been able to do that with bank wires, USD, and even in some instances USDC. 
it's been it's been kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie, but with Tether, I'm able to move it from one exchange to the other, and it's my own, you know, cold storage, no problem. Uh, again, maybe it's they're just blocking out the bad boys who they know, you know, if they're gonna start getting some probes into them. I definitely think that you know we're not too far off from Binance probe or DOJ case absolutely being, you know, charges charges coming towards. Binance, most likely, right? They already said it. They said it. It's likely that they're just waiting for the right time to drop the charges or put drop the charges on CZ. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's it's just wild to how you can second guess yourself in this market, especially when it comes to fear and like FUD. Like that's why I think it's so easy for CZ and these guys to say throw up that, and then people are just like, oh no, these guys are right. You know, everything's gonna be okay. But at the same time, you know, they're taking your liquidity and they're trying to just survive another day. So. Yeah, that's all I got on that. Just absolutely crazy. Definitely, uh, definitely keep your guard up. I, I, I would be, I, I don't trust a fucking thing right now. Yeah, allegedly, Tether stated that they have excess reserves of $2.44 billion. So they're, they're doing pretty well. They have their that's reserves in some high, some high quality, like US bonds, like, I think if Tether goes down, that's that's a, a huge, pro- obviously a huge problem. That's the worst. I'm not saying there's scenario. no. Yeah, everyone else. I'm not saying there's no chance fine. of it happening. Yeah, like Binance. I'm not saying and- there's no chance of it happening, but if it, it seems like, and they also, you know, they have three point. This showing here, like over three billion in precious metals, like gold. Like, I don't know. It seems like they're pretty. I'm seeing like a breakdown, and this was back in. May, but a a breakdown of like, you know, they have billions in treasury bills. They have corporate bonds, precious metals. They have like some Bitcoin, like they, they're not touting it as like a huge part of their reserves. I think it's about 2% according to this. So I don't know. Tether seems pretty, pretty safe to me. Um, I, I wouldn't be freaking out about it. Circle as well. Like a lot. It's funny, man. These uh, risky assets, you know, a lot of the companies that are running them do a better job of managing risk than mm-hmm. a lot of like big banks and stuff, like Absolutely. by a pretty wide margin. So, despite the narrative around it, I don't think it's insane to have some faith in Tether. And if we do see, you know, what you're discussing or any sort of, of concerns there around uh, depegging of the stablecoin, I'm, I'm okay making that move again. Yeah, I think that the main thing is a lot of the fake stable coins that we've been talking about, like True USD. I, again, I don't have any proof that True USD, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm, this is just my opinion, 100%. <laughs> I just got to make sure in case we fucking, I don't want to get hit with a suit too. But I don't like True USD just because I know that CZ went straight to them after, you know, BUSD absolutely got halted for minting, right? Once they couldn't mint that BUSD, he went to another tr- trading pair. He's pulling up another trading pair. He's trying to find liquidity in an illiquid market. And again, it's easy to you know prop up this entire entire game if you have pretty much a stable coins in your back pocket, right? Maybe there's some uh, OTC deal, right? Said that we don't know about. Again, I'm speculating at this point, but there's it just doesn't make uh, a whole lot of sense to me too that he's also talking about algorithmic stable coins. Like there's just so much around stable coins right now, and we're in an illiquid market again. It just tells me and that screams that okay, we need a way to print money nonstop so that we can survive this and moving forward there's just so much that's adding up to the point where it's like okay uh volumes are low we're not really adding these users and guess what we're gonna lay off more people and we see that with uh circle too laying off people because market caps are dropping not that they're a bad company by any means you know still great you know it hasn't hasn't depegged too much other than that one time that they had their reserves inside sivb but for the most part it's like you know this is uh i think we're gonna see a lot of regulation come because of players like CZ and true USD and some of these other ones that are absolutely just going to hurt a lot of people because they're going to bring down some of these exchanges due to insolvency or fraud. Yep, for sure. All right, let's look at a few of the crypto charts as we wrap it up today. We'll start with Bitcoin, but I do want to look at ETH. Like I said, that news that we've gotten around, you know, I think 11 filings for ETH ETFs are out there. There's definitely a lot of interest you know, that with the, the PayPal thing, like I know that we had House and Ace, appreciate you guys sharing some more insight around the PayPal, the t- uh, contract for the PayPal stablecoin. Looks pretty garbage, very, very old. But 
it still shows that people are trying to build on ETH and the price doesn't reflect that right now. Does that mean their price doesn't reflect, reflect anytime soon? I don't think so. We're we're still in this range, but let's do Bitcoin first and then we can talk about Ethereum. Definitely. And I want to end the show with Yellow because obviously they uh, finally filed for bankruptcy and we'll look at some of that price action. A lot of liquidations in that regard. But this is Bitcoin right now. Uh, again, I hate to say this again, but we're still in the support range, uh, the supply range. That means, oh, we're not even sharing the screen. I'm an idiot. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, Dude, here's the supply just, range. It's just boring right now. Look look how boring this is. We're just like slowly here's, grinding down. Here's the thing. Dominance is going up, though, because the entirety of crypto is actually bleeding out, but no one's realizing it. I want to pull up uh, something that Ace said earlier. Total mark, crypto market trending down. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we'll look at it in a second, but even if Bitcoin seems like it's, you know, holding strong at this level, like obviously couldn't go above 31K. Now it's it's really hard for it to drop below 29K without coming right back up. I mean, today we were down at around 28,718. That was our low, right back at 29,062. So are we short term liquidating people? Maybe, absolutely. Uh, but it just seems like we're getting at so much exhaustion to the point where it's like, okay, we can drop 300 bucks, we can push it up for four or 500 bucks, but at the same time, we can't break above the key uh, levels of resistance and we're not dropping below the key levels of support. Uh, I said that August might be a very boring month if we were in the place right now, if, where we are right now, because we could just be in this transition where it's like, okay, maybe the volumes are absolutely dead and then we won't see anything really pick up until like the end, towards the end of summer once we get into that September, October range. Again, that's when I think that we saw most of the, even in the bull market, we saw that September was a huge month in 2021 and it just absolutely picked up and led us into the all-time highs in October later that year. So I think the market moves in September, October, seeing how it is right now, this might be a very lackluster, boring August. Um, I could be dead wrong, but the thing is we should be breaking this right here this level right below. So this is coming in at around 29.18. I mean, sure, we were below it earlier today, but there's a massive gap from 29.18 all the way down to about 26.836, right? So somewhere between the 15, the 200 EMA and the daily, I would anticipate us to go retest. If we look at the weekly, I mean, it's absolutely insane to think that, you know, this weekly chart, it's, it's finding support up here. Uh, does that mean that we're going to push up once again? I don't know. I don't see the liquidity coming in. I've seen that on CoinGlass, a lot of the funding rates have been absolutely positive or neutral, which tells me that we're likely not going to see a short squeeze because a lot of people are going long. But at the same time, if everyone's going long, then maybe there is the opportunity for it to push up a little bit. We are oversold on the daily, I believe. Let's see. I think we've been oversold on the daily for a while. I haven't even kept up. Yeah, we've been look how long we've been oversold on the daily over here, but the volumes are so low. I think this could be just an absolute slow bleed, and then we're just going to get one bit of news that's going to tank us, and then that maybe we see a recovery, right? It's very possible. We could also just put in like some weak uh, recovery, some weak corrective pattern to the point where it's like, okay, we see that there is exhaustion at this level. It's going to have to go down. We're, we're going to have to find, find a way to make some money. Otherwise, if we're just trading in this range for a while, absolutely insane how boring it's going to be uh going into you know q4 so that's what i'm seeing with bitcoin uh again i think the thing that a lot of people aren't accounting for though even though if this price is really going sideways is how much dominance has been increasing over the past few days i mean we're above 50 percent again and we look at it today we it's not even reflected here but we hit 50.52 percent in total market cap of crypto being owned by Bitcoin. So that's a good thing to see if we are expecting there to be, you know, alts to be bleeding to Bitcoin. Once we got that 50%, that's great. Our next target is 52% though. We have to reclaim. And the reason why Bitcoin is going up, I think a lot of people are underestimating is because XRP dominance has been going down and we, you know, it was at 4%. Now it's at 2.89%. So all that percentage went in one direction or another. A lot of it went into Bitcoin. I think a lot of it also went into USDT, right? USDT, clearly people are putting cash into, which tells me that they are selling off, meaning that the Bitcoin dominance chart is probably going to go up soon, uh, along with uh, obviously stable coins, unless we get some type of news where people feel like it's time to start you know, putting some money in there. But these, uh, these dominance levels held by Bitcoin and USDT, Absolutely strong. We see the XRP is bleeding out. And, you know, if we take a look at the total market cap, we're still in the downtrend, like Ace said, right? They're looking at this head and shoulders pattern that I was talking about. As of right now, it looks like it's playing out pretty well. And if I go to the monthly chart, you know, we're overbought. We're going to be extremely overbought come, you know, the end of this month. 
it's a good chance that we start to make our way down. And again, we're in this massive parallel channel. So I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, maybe, maybe we finish out this month kind of slowly bleeding out to this point where we're at the bottom of this uh, right shoulder. And then come September, October is when we see this absolute channel break. And that would be pretty devastating. I mean, we're not, uh, we're not talking about a small move here. We're probably going maybe to the origin, which is 730 billion dollars total market cap and if we look at the alt market right now i mean this is absolutely insane this is uh the macro channel let me get rid of some of these stupid squigglies sorry guys i was <laughs> you doing... and your lines man i know uh the best thing is half the stuff's probably bs too i'm just just scenarios that could potentially play out and i'm looking at the total three right now on the weekly it's so overbought slowly coming down and we can see that we've already put in three pretty decent red candles coming down right uh we're at 30, 335 billion and if you watch our episodes regularly you can see this number absolutely be dropping from 360 billion when we did that one episode after xrp so in the time since we look that, at that on the look at that on the daily too it's funny because the xrp day on the daily is just as giant and it's just been a slow grind back and we're now at you know almost exactly where we were the day before the xrp news broke Absolutely. Oh, my bad. It's $378 billion that we whipped up to when XRP happened. Fucking insane. Absolutely insane. And then, you know, I mean, where we dropped to since, you know, we dropped about 11% of total market cap for uh, altcoins. So that's a that's a massive move. Um, I mean, do I think there's a lot more? Absolutely. Looking at, you know, the weekly, I think there's a lot more room to the downside. If we look at the monthly, you know, Dude, monthly how was- crazy, how crazy was November of 2021? The on November of 2021, the total three market cap was the same number as the total market cap of crypto is today. That's like, that's absolutely insane. Yeah, it's one point one three trillion dollars. What 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 were we doing back then? Absolutely, just spending free money. <laughs> just heads up asses is really the best way I can put it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's so insane to think, you know, again, perspective is everything. And we're looking at where we are currently. It's It just tells me that even look, look at this monthly chart, right? Uh, the weekly is so overbought, but the monthly is, you know, coming out of the uh, oversold. But the volumes have been dropping, like, nonstop. Like, I mean, look how much the volumes have dropped over the past few months at altcoins. I don't think anyone's excited about any altcoins. And if they are, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I, it freaked me out the other day when I looked at ApeCoin and it was like $1.80. And I'm like, yeah. what happened here? I haven't been keeping up with this at all. But money is slowly bleeding out of this ecosystem. And we're looking at 335, 335 billion right now. I guarantee you in two, three weeks, we're going to look back at this and be like, damn, how much it's it's bled so much. And it's felt like it hasn't. This is probably going to be a slow period of the, of the year. Uh, again, I think we have a lot of news and FUD that's definitely you know getting us excited for a move. I don't necessarily guarantee that we're going to see that come until... I don't know, maybe September, October. I think that right now we're just going to see slow bleeding to the point where it's like absolutely just like pulling teeth. Like I'm going to pull up BNB right now because this one's been absolutely, absolutely boring if you've been keeping up with the uh, price action lately. I don't even know what I'm doing. What is this? The one hour? What is this? Oh, wrong one. My bad. Here it is. All right. So we've been seeing this range. This is the one hour chart. And we can see that we've just been in this symmetrical triangle at back and forth. We've been ranging between 256 and and 224, but now we're putting in uh, lower highs and lower and higher lows to the point where we're ranging between five dollars, and it's just going back and forth. And each parallel channel it breaks, tests the bottom of that trend line, then it goes up to the top, tests that, gets rejected. It's it's a game. I mean, if if you've been trading this, I mean, it's pretty easy if you've just been doing like quick scalps because it's. It's pretty much clockwork. I mean, we're probably going to get to the end of this channel, and then it's going to have to make a decision. If I look on the weekly, when's the end of that channel? I think it's next week, actually. Uh, so maybe we get some direction there, but we could also just keep going sideways in it. Uh, yeah, next week would be the end of this parallel channel. And again, we're oversold on the weekly, but again, there is we're talking about liquidity issues, and a lot of these markets are dead. So what's Binance going to really do? Is it likely that it's going to go up for a liquidation event, or is it going to go down? It's very possible it can go up and you know liquidate some late shorts. But again, it's this is uh these patterns usually tend to break in the way of the the structure and the pattern right now or the the trend. My, my bad, the trend. The trend right now is down. Uh, we broke from this, and we didn't even break from this like that well. We broke from it and went down to about two twenty. You know, we went down to freaking one eighty four back in June of twenty twenty two. So I think that 
likely going to continue this pattern. It would make the most sense, especially if this is five waves here. Is it being wave one, wave two, three, four, and be a wave five? But, you know, we're just in this slow bleed zone, and it's very boring. Uh, what's not in a slow bleed zone is XRP, though. Again, we've been talking about this for a while. Look at XRP. Just bleeding. I still think – I mean, we're back in the parallel channel that I said that we were trading in, and, you know, it only took, what, one, two, three, three weeks or so to get back here. It's uh, it's, it's insane, but, yeah, money is leaving the, the ecosystem. Do not be fooled thinking that liquidity is coming. Uh, there's a lot of bullish news, but following the money is going to give you the best – absolute uh indication of what's going to happen in the market and i'm seeing a lot of the money leave the market and they're doing so quietly all right uh anything else we want to discuss before we wrap it up uh you wanted to take a look at eth i think you said yes yeah, let's, let's do a little look at eth yes uh it's in that parallel channel still, man. Um, I mean, yep. weekly, it looks like it's coming down. It's finding some support right now on the 50 moving average. I would like to see it test the 200, which is at 1617. I think we saw a pretty good move this morning. Uh, where were we earlier today? The low we went to was 1799. No, it's on the weekly. Maybe it was yesterday. Well, the daily today. Oh, no, it was 1799. That was the close, the, the low that we put in today. Again, day's not over. We're still at 1817. We're pretty far away from that those top levels that we're hitting up here, though, right? We're not at twenty thousand anymore. We're about two hundred dollars south of that. So that's good to see that you know maybe the money is absolutely leaving this ecosystem too for ETH. Um, you know, let's see how this is looking on the monthly. It's completely overbought, and we're in a parallel channel. So, and then we're starting to see some of this break right here too, right? Uh, you can see that the past two months that it's been in the red. So maybe we are going to see some type of massive move to the downside for ETH. I think we are. Uh, we can see that the volumes have been decreasing as the price been pushing up. And I'm still charting this as a ABC correction wave, right? This is a massive uh, A wave. Here's a B wave correction. I think that we still got a pretty good move to the downside with our C wave. Does it look like it's uh, it's about to turn? I think everything looks like it's like shit right now. So I think, yeah, it's very possible everything turns fairly soon. I'm, I'm being conservative and being an asshole here, say in September, October, because I'm giving us a better time horizon so we don't get our hopes up. But this thing could move fast on any given piece of news. And again, I think that the stock market is a little bit different than where crypto is right now. So we could see maybe crypto move faster than the stock market. But at the same time, we could also see everything just go down you know, simultaneously because of a massive credit. I mean, event, in, right? in, previous, in previous cycles, we've seen the crypto market bottom out before the stock market. So Absolutely. it wouldn't surprise me that that was the case again. Right. And I'm kind of expecting it at this point. It would make sense. Like something bad happens in crypto. Obviously that hurts more of, and it hurts crypto and it doesn't really hurt TradFi at all. But again, I think that we are also in a situation where the global macro economic outlook for the next two years or so is so fucking scary that we could potentially see crypto bottom. I mean, we think that's the bottom. And then there's just a little bit more because, you know, there's credit is either so tight or people are just have to have money in some way. So they just sell off any asset that they possibly can. Maybe there's just, you know, de-risking completely. I could definitely see a scenario where we start seeing a little bit more of a dip, even after uh, whatever comes for crypto, if that does bottom first. So again, this is more than just charts. I like, we see everything's oversold, but doesn't give me the confidence that it's going to go up. Right. That's, we can see that for the altcoin market. We're seeing all the money bleed out. So I'm not necessarily, too concerned with some of the charts and lower time frame stuff, even if it does look like it's making a move to the upside. I think that for the most part, we're going to start seeing the move to the downside heavily because of the higher time frame, meaning like the weekly and the monthly are going to play more of an impact on whether it's alt or crypto. Again, Bitcoin dominance being at 50.47 and alts being extremely oversold, but at the same time, overbought on the higher time frames tells me that there's probably going to be a more of a move to the downside because the dominance is going to be too strong for alts. And if we're already seeing the slow bleed and dominance is going up for Bitcoin. I mean, it's doing nothing and it's just absolutely wrecking some of these markets. So it's just going to be, a, uh, it just it could be just a slow bleed for a few, uh, few weeks here, but I definitely do think that the massive move is coming and we have not seen capitulation yet. I stand by that 100%. Yep. I agree. Oh, I... no. Let's look at yellow real quick, just because that was insane. Again, another company going under uh, bankruptcy. We knew that they were kind of going under, but they were pushing up going into uh, the other day, like right into Friday's close. And I don't know if that was just people, you know, putting a little bit of a short squeeze, expecting a company to fail. Like this is the hourly. And we could see that on Wednesday, they started pushing that gap. up. Yeah, absolute massive gap that it filled. And then this is Monday morning, you know, 
they announced that they were gonna they they filed for bankruptcy like at one one a.m. this morning Central Standard Time, and then we could see that as soon as the market opened, shot up, closed this gap, and then it came right back down. Absolute liquidation event again. There's it's all about people thinking that there's easy money in this space, and there's not. And the market makers absolutely went right after them. But then the bigger picture is uh, we're expecting you know a lot more bankruptcy filings to come forward. A lot of these companies are hurting. And a lot of it is because there's, they can't really get that many truckers too, right? There's not that many. There's a high demand for people who are willing to drive these trucks and they can't find them. And that's obviously going to affect prices or, you know, not just stock price, but it's definitely going to affect the company's profitability because they can't, uh, you know, send it to some of these contracts where they can make money, be profitable. It's, it's a really wild thing. And this is why I'm, I'm saying again that the macro outlook for the global economy is so much part it's such a huge part of where we're heading in this market that you can't discount it and just look at the technicals the technicals are important yes but i think that we are way beyond that and we need to be more objective and we could look at this a little bit more when we talk about our psychology episode later this week sounds like a plan all right everybody that is going to wrap it up for today appreciate you watching if you have not yet hit those buttons down below smash the like button drop a comment Subscribe to the channel. Share us out on social. We'll be back tomorrow at our regular time, 3 p.m. Eastern. Going to be talking about some of the El Nino trades that we like in the coming months as the weather begins to tra uh, change. I know Kev's a big energy guy right now. Ooh, He's day. just like up to his eyeballs in natural gas. So thank you, everybody, for watching. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Have I'm an producer. awesome one. Later. Take care, He's everyone. a producer. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody.